This video is called The Cult of Domesticity, and in this video we're going to be switching gears a little bit. We were looking at Native Americans and how they were treated in the 1800s, and now we're going to be moving on to a new group of people. We're going to be looking at how women were treated in the 1800s. All the images in this presentation are going to be actual images from the time period um, that would have been um, seen by women in the 1800s, and I want you to start thinking about how those images reinforce some of the values um, that women were expected, expected to act like in this time period. So first of all, let's define what the cult of domesticity means. It was a belief system during the 1800s about how women should act and behave and generally function in society. The belief was most prevalent in the middle and upper classes, the more wealthy and affluent women, especially white women. However, the belief did extend throughout all of um, society to some extent. The main parts of this belief system, there were quite a few, but we're going to focus on three. That women should be religious, they should be subservient to men, and that should they should be um, homemakers and their place should be in the home and not in the workplace. So first of all, let's talk about religion. It was part of the belief system that women should be very, very religious and have very strong religious beliefs and follow the rules and laws of their religion. Um, part of this belief system that women should be religious meant that women did need some education. Although women were had limited opportunities in higher education, all women were given an opportunity to be educated up through grade school. So think like elementary school today. This would give women enough education um, in order to read the Bible and teach Bible study, which would be things that they would be expected to do. Uh, practicing religion could be done from home. Reading the Bible could be done from home. So it kind of goes along with other parts of the belief system. And because women were expected to be religious, um, some activities, religious activities that women would engage in outside of home life might be things like social reform, helping the poor, stopping slavery, and preaching family values. Certainly very good things, um, but that would be kind of geared toward their religious beliefs. Here you see an image about um, women in prayer that would be kind of trying to get women to feel like they should be very religious, whether or not they wanted to be. Moving on, um, women were also treated sort of like second-class citizens to men. They were expected to listen to men, do what they were told when they were married. Um, the, the husband in the relationship would be the one to make the decisions, and the woman was not supposed to question um, the husband in any way and really not have an equal input into the relationship. In fact, legally, a married woman owned nothing. Her husband would be the legal property owner and owner of all the values in the relationship. Even if that money and that property came from the woman's parents, the, the man actually still technically owned it. Um, there were abusive relationships in the 1800s, like there are today. And in those relationships, women had very few options to escape those relationships. Divorce was frowned upon, and it was very uncommon. An abused woman had no legal rights of repercussion against her, her husband. It was legally okay for uh, a husband to physically abuse or whip or, or beat their wives. Um, in rare cases of divorce, custody did go to the man. So if a woman divorced her husband, she risked losing her children. Um, it was pretty tough. Um, women were not treated legally very well. And in some readings I've read, women were... If you had a husband that was abusive, it really wasn't that much different than being a slave. Moving on to the third topic um, in this belief system is that women were expected to be homemakers and not working outside of the household. Few, if any, opportunities existed for women for work um, or for higher education to kind of advance themselves to become more skilled. Besides homemaking and raising children, Women would engage in leisure activities such as weaving, sewing, um, leisure reading, all kinds of things that go along with the idea that you're supposed to be in the house and not doing other activities. Certainly not sports or other activities that women engage in today. If women were to work, so, um, women did start to, in some cases, leave the home and, get, and go into the workplace um, in the 1800s, but those work options were very limited. Usually it was mill work or other unskilled labor. And when they were working, they were getting paid about half that of a man doing the same job. So although there were some work opportunities, they weren't great ones. 
Um, this belief system had lots of effects on society in the 1800s. First of all, you see here, this is a, a magazine cover of a book called Godey's Lady Book. It would be kind of like um, the equivalent of like a cosmopolitan magazine or a magazine that women of the time period would read. And it reinforced the idea of women as a homemaker and a second-class citizen. So it was written by men to kind of keep women thinking that what they were doing was the way they were supposed to live their life. Women that went against this belief system um, could be called things like monster women or even be ridiculed in the public. And here is a quote at the bottom here that comes from this magazine. And I'll read it to you. There is more to be learned about pouring out tea and coffee than most young ladies are willing to believe. So it's kind of funny to read that nowadays, but that's the kind of thing that would, women would read about doing in the 1800s. And it really shows you um, the way women were supposed to act. Now, there were some women that went against the stereotype. Elizabeth Blackwell was the first woman to go to medical school. Um, she applied to 29 medical schools before she was accepted, and she was only accepted because she thought it was a joke. There were um, the Grimke sisters. Um, they became, or one of the two sisters, became the first woman to speak in front of Congress, and they joined in the fight against slavery. So some women were trying to, to further themselves, but they face an uphill battle in the 1800s, and women that went against the belief system and against the stereotype were subject to ridicule and harassment from men and from society, and even from other women in some cases. So to conclude the video, the belief during the 1800s called the cult of domesticity, or that's one way of referring to it, was that women were not equal, they were subservient to men, and they were expected to behave a certain way. Beliefs of the time were reinforced by popular culture. I showed you an example from that magazine about how women were supposed to act, and that's the kind of thing that women would read about. And finally, there were some women that resisted their place in society and fought to be included, and they did face um, ridicule and harassment from society.